So hi there students, welcome back to another video lesson. So after kong introduce sa inyo yung principal roots, so for this particular video lesson, we will be estimating the square root of a whole number to the nearest hundreds. So mainly ang pag-uusapan natin dito is yung mga uh, non-perfect squares. So kasi kapag perfect squares sila, rational numbers naman kasi yung mga sagot. So let's start. So for our lesson objectives, first, we will estimate the square root of a number to the nearest hundreds. So, so two decimal places po ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. And then, after nating ma-estimate yung square root ng number na yon to the nearest hundreds, ipa-plot natin yung mga irrational numbers on the number line. So yung mga nakuha nating sagot doon, ipa-plot lang natin dun sa number line. So estimating square roots. When principal roots are irrational, estimating is very important. So, sabi ko nga kanina, ang pag-uusapan po natin dito yung mga non-perfect squares. So, wherein, yung mga square root ng non-perfect squares na to ay irrational. Okay, unlike kung square root of 49, so square root of 49 is 7, wherein 7 is rational. Okay, so yung 7, pwede natin siyang isulat in the form of A over B, like 7 over 1. So, ayan. So, yung mga non-perfect squares, so like for example, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root, square root of 5, and so on, so they cannot be written in the form of A over B. Kasi nga, irrational po yung mga sagot. So, what are the steps in estimating square roots to the nearest hundreds? First, Determine between which two integers does the square root of a number is located. So, kagaya ng ginawa natin dun sa previous video, uh, tinignan natin, kinuha natin kung anong dalawang perfect squares nakapagitan yung principal root. Okay? So, ganun ang una nating step dito. And then, after that, find the difference between the given number and the lower perfect square. So, kapag nakuha na natin yung dalawang uh, perfect squares na yon or dalawang integers na yon na kung saan nakapagitan yung ating given number, isasubtract natin yung lower perfect square dun sa given number. So, yun po yung second step. And then, for our third step, find the difference between the greater perfect square and the lower perfect square. Okay. So, kung kanina, sinubtract natin yung uh, number tsaka yung lower perfect square for the third step naman, yung pinakamalaking perfect square tsaka yung lower perfect square pagsusubtract natin sila so for our fourth step just simply get the ratio between uh, the step 2 and step 3 and write the approximate decimal value so yung step 2 and step 3 dito yung mga sagot po na nakuha natin doon sa step 2 and step 3 kukunin lang natin yung quotient ibig sabihin yung nakuha natin sagot sa step 2 I-divide natin sa nakuha nating sagot sa step 3. So, and then, approximate decimal value lang ang ating isusulat. Okay? So, to the nearest hundreds, two decimal places lang. And then, combine the whole number and approximate decimal value. Okay? So, kapag yung, yung number natin, nakuha na natin yung kung anong integers nakapagitan yun. Okay? So, ang kukunin natin yung mas mababa. Okay, and then ia-add natin yung whole number na yon dun sa approximate decimal value. And then, of course, round up the answer to the nearest hundreds. Okay, so kasi yun, yun yung pakay ng ating video is to estimate square roots to the nearest hundreds. So, two decimal places po dapat. So, let's have activity number one. Estimate the square roots of the following irrational numbers to the nearest hundreds. Then, plot the square root of the irrational numbers on the number line. Okay, so ang una muna nating step is, kunin muna natin yung estimate na square root ng irrational number. And then after nun, tsaka natin i-plot dun sa number line. So let's have example number 1, the square root of 45. Okay, so anong perfect squares, dalawang perfect squares na kapaloob yung square root of 45? So square root of 36 and square root of 49. So sulat lang natin, Square root of 36, and then square root of 45, and then square, square root of 49. So, between which two integers does square root of 45 
lie. Okay, nakapagitan po siya sa integers na 6 and 7. So, paano natin nakuha yung 6 and 7 na yan? Square root of 36, that is 6. And then, square root of 49, that is 7. Next na gagawin natin is, yung lower perfect square, isusubtract natin siya dun sa uh, given number. So, magiging ganito siya. 45 minus 36. And that is 9. And then, yung sec, uh, next step natin is, yung greater perfect square, minus dun sa lower perfect square. So, magiging 49 minus 36. And that is 13. And then, yung next na gagawin natin, yung nakuha natin dito sa step 2 na 9, and then, yung step 3, which is 13, i-divide lang po natin. So, magiging ganito siya. 9 over 13. So, 9 divided by 13, that is approximately 0 0.69. And then, yung last step natin is, i-add natin yung whole number dun sa nakuha natin na 0 0.69. So, anong whole number ang kukunin natin? Okay, so, ang kukunin po natin is yung laging mas mababa, which is 6. So, magiging 6 plus 0 0.69 and that is 6.69. Okay. So, ngayon, ipaplot natin yung 6.69 sa number line. So, sulat lang natin manda dito sa ilalim. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then, dito naman sa kaliwa ng 6, 5, and 4. Okay. So, nasa pagitan po siya ng 6 and 7. So, tatansyahin lang po natin. So, kung sa pinakagitna is 6.5, okay, so, uh, urong lang po tayo ng konti. So, like for example, dito. So, ayan. So, dito po natin ipaplot yung square root of 45. Sa pagitan po ng 6 and 7. Next. The square root of 141, so nakapagitan po siya sa square root of 121 and square root of 144. So, anong square root ng 121? That is 11. And then, square root of 144, 12. Ibig sabihin, Nakapagitan yung square root of 141 or nakapalob yung square root of 141 sa 11 and 12. Next na gagawin natin, 141 minus 121. And that is 20. Next step, 144 minus 121. And that is 23. And then, i-divide natin yung 20 sa 23. Okay, so magiging 20 over 23. And that is equal to, approximately equal to 0 0.87. Next, yung 0 0.87, i-add natin ngayon sa 11. So yung whole number lagi po, nakukunin po natin is yung laging mas mababa. Okay, hindi po kasi pwedeng yung mataas. Like for example, hindi po natin pwedeng kunin yung 12. It's because... Yun po kasing square root of 141 is nakapalob lang po sa 11 and 12. Kapag nag-add tayo ng 0 0.87 sa 12, lalagpas na po yun, 12.87. Ibig sabihin, nasa pagitan na siya ng 12 and 13. So, 11 plus 0 0.87, that is 11.87. Okay? So, i-plot lang natin. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15. So, 11.87, nasa pagitan siya ng 11 and 12. So, malapit na siya sa 12. So, lagay natin siya banda dito. So, tansya lang po yan. So, and then isulat natin yung square root of 141. Nasa pagitan po siya ng 11 and 12. Next, the square root of 250. Okay. So, nakapagitan po siya sa square root ng 225. 
Soka 256. Okay. So, anong integers? Anong dalawang integers na magkasunod? Nakapalobang square root of 250. That is 15 and 16. Yung square root ng 225 and 256. And then, next step natin, Yung given number minus yung lower perfect square, which is 225, that is 25. And then, yung greater perfect square na 256 minus a lower perfect square, which is 225, and that is 31. So, next step natin, 25, divide natin sa 31. Okay. So, which is approximately equal to 0 0.81 and then yung last step natin yung whole number na 15 yung mas mababa i-add natin sa 0 0.81 and that is that is equal to 15.81 so ang next step na gagawin natin kung gusto niyo pong makita na 15.81 nga yung approximate value ng square root of 250 okay so 15.81 times 15.81 Okay. So, and then, hindi kayo makakakuha dyan ng pinakasaktong sagot talaga kasi nag estimate lang po tayo. Okay. So, next, ipa-plot ngayon natin yung 15.81 sa number line. So, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so i-plot natin yung 15.81. Again, malapit na naman sa 16. So, dito banda. Ayan, malapit na po kasi siya sa 16. So, and then, sulat lang natin yung square root of 250. Nasa pagitan ng 15 and 16. Next, square root of 549. So, nasa pagitan po siya ng square root of 529 and square root of 576. So, between which two integers does square root of 549 lie? So, between 23 and 24. Okay, next. 549 minus the lower perfect square which is 529 and that is 20. Next, greater perfect square 576 minus the lower perfect square 529 that is 47. Next, we divide 20 by 47 that is approximately equal to 0.5. 43. And then our last step, 23 plus 0 0.43, that is equal to 23.43. So again, 23.43 times 23.43, makakuha tayo ng 549. Again, hindi po sakto yung makakuha nating sagot. It's because nag estimate lang po tayo. Okay? By the way, pag... Uh, ni round up naman natin yung product doon, mag equal naman sa 549. So, let's plot 23.43 on the number line. So, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then 26. So, in 23.43, Malapit siya sa gitna, sa 23.5. Okay, so sulat natin siya, or shade natin, ito on 23.5. So sulat natin siya, shade natin banda dito. Ayan. Okay, and then sulat lang natin yung square root of 549. Nasa pagitan po siya ng 23 and 24. Then for our last example, the square root of 1057... So, nasa pagitan po siya ng square root of 1024 and square root of 1089. 
And then, anong integers na kapagitan yung square root of 1057? Sa pagitan po ng 32 and 33. Next, 1057 minus the lower perfect square which is 1024, that is 33. Next, greater perfect square 1089 minus the lower perfect square 1024, That is 65. And then we divide 33 by 65. That is approximately equal to 0.51. Finally, we add 32 and 0.51. So our final answer will be 32.51. Okay, so 0.51, napakalapit sa pinakagitna. Okay. So, i-plot po natin. So, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So, nasa pagitan po siya ng 32 and 33. Okay? So, since 0.51 nga siya, nasa halos gitna. Okay? Ayan. Ayan. Halos nasa gitna po siya. Then we write the square root of 1057. Nasa gitna po siya ng 32 and 33. So I hope naging clear yung discussion natin sa pag-estimate ng square roots ng mga non-perfect squares. Okay? So kasi kapag perfect squares po, hindi na po natin kailangan pang mag-estimate. Kasi po, sakto po yung sagot, rational numbers po. So, what's next? Illustrate different subsets of real numbers. So, pag-uusapan po natin dito yung real number system. So, na-introduce na yung ibang mga real numbers sa inyo halos. Okay, so, mas makikilala nyo yung mga subsets ng real numbers sa susunod kong video lesson. So, yun lang. Maraming salamat.